Right, so I'm sure many of you have heard of Kadak before, but um, we are an Autodesk Platinum partner uh, based here in the UK uh, and widely across Europe. Uh, we specialize in helping manufacturing and architectural construction companies and a whole host of other companies in their digitalization process. Obviously, we're, we're heavily linked to Autodesk, uh, being a partner of theirs, and we provide all their software throughout the UK. If you'd like to follow up with me after the webinar, if there's something you're interested in, whether it be Vault, whether it be, you know, product data management or product lifecycle management, any questions you have, uh, I'll be happy to follow up with any of you and we can go from there. Uh, in terms of some just general housekeeping, um, if you'd like to ask questions throughout, that would be great. Um, we'll get to those at the end, but um, feel, free, feel free to ask them throughout and um, then there'll be a part at the end where we'll, we'll get to them. But um, I'll pass you on to Mark and uh, he can give you a little introduction to himself and then uh, we can get things underway. So Mark. Please take the take the stage. Thank you very much, Johnny. Well, good morning. And firstly, I'd like to thank you all for taking time out today to join me on this webinar covering Autodesk PDM and PLM, the value of data sharing and collaboration. My name's Mark Pattinson and I'm technical service consultant for UK and Ireland. Uh, just a little bit about myself, um, 14 years in the channel now, um, basically concentrating on all the products within the product design and manufacturing collection. And you'll probably agree there's there's there's, there's plenty of them now. Um, I'm also adhered to the advanced manufacturing tools like Inventor Nastran. Um, we've got the Inventor Cam and Generative Design. And I have dabbled in a little bit of PDM and PLM, hopefully. So ho hopefully be able to go through that with you uh, on this presentation. Um, my spare time, I don't really have much spare time, to be honest. Um, I'm uh, 10 years this month, uh, volunteer for the RNLI. Um, I'm, I've got various roles there. Um, so my main role, my main role, sorry, is obviously crew. I'm also a mechanic, making sure that the, uh, the engines, the hull, the integrity of the boat is all ready for that, that shout, which uh, we're on call 24 seven. So if there is an alarm in the background, then please ignore that. I will ignore it through this presentation because um, we do have a lot of cover on today. So I'm okay at that. I'm also um, lifeboat training coordinator. So, you know, coordinate all the training and make sure that all the new uh, tr um, crew members who come through the system have the correct training and very uh, shortly becoming an LTA. So I'll be able to assess them on station and make sure they're ready to go to sea, et cetera. So yeah, that's that's a big part of my life um, and any spare time I have, I do that. Um, I did buy a sailboat uh, through lockdown, although I'm not so confident. Um, I can do anything uh, on, the, on the, give me two powerful engines uh, and that's it, I can do everything, but put a sheet to the wind, uh, no thank you. Uh, it's I don't know if it's for me yet, but we're still going, still training and hopefully uh, next summer I'll get that one cracked too. But okay, so moving on to um, the agenda. Okay, so it's a pretty uh, brief agenda. Um, we will be working through this webinar at, at a pretty fast pace um, and hopefully covering as much as we can in this is in the, in the time given. Um, but don't worry, um, we will have time at the end for questions and answers and hopefully I won't take up your full hour um, that you've given up today. So my main um, objective of this presentation is to position the Autodesk tools or collaboration tools for both internal and external collaborators. So giving that access up. Um, so we're going to go run through all of the solutions um, available in this sort of portfolio of products. Uh, first off, looking at shared views, thin client, which some of you may, may be aware of, the Vault mobile app, uh, Project Sync, Sync and Fusion Team, uh, Autodesk Drive and uh, Autodesk Docs, which will cover uh, the differences between those shortly. Vault PLM and also uh, Fusion Manage. And then we should have time, like Johnny mentioned, to have question and answers to the end of this session. Okay, oh, sorry, just moved everything in my office. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so now really it'd be surprising to 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 understand that even in this digital age companies are still struggling to share data between departments you know the divisions and and, this, and locations especially with um, external con contracts or external parties uh, companies are still operating a very siloed approach which um and and this is and what we're seeing is this is still very common in this day and age um to do this this would really need to um, look at a digital transformation in the way that 
process and that operation works. And hopefully after today's session, um, we'll, we'll be able to see those vital cogs in that ever important wheel. So how do we solve these common challenges? And which solution is best for your organization? And hopefully that's why you're here today. Um, so today we're gonna to deep dive into the Autodesk Vault PLM technologies. And it's gonna give you a very good understanding of what's out there. And when I say Autodesk Vault PLM, um, it's a combined name, it's the buzzword right now uh, within Autodesk of Autodesk Vault and Fusion Lifecycle, which is now called Fusion Manage, if, uh, if, if, if you've seen the, the latest press on that. To do this simply on this presentation, because we only have an hour, we're going to concentrate on three important roles. Um, the first of these roles is the author. So this is somebody who is creating a content, okay? Normally have a CAD integration, something like Inventor or AutoCAD, etc. And then we're gonna concentrate on the participants, okay? And these are the, 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 the users who need to participate in certain workflows, design review and change requests, etc. And then the reviewer, the read-only reviewer, okay? So this could be an internal reviewer who needs to, to see documents, see workflows, check ECOs, etc. but they're not gonna participate in that particular workflow. And this can be both internal and external, excuse me. Now, whilst focusing and keeping this presentation as simple as possible, we're gonna be focusing on those key areas and where each of these user cases fit within each um, Vault application. So we've got the Vault Shared View, Vault Thin Client, Vault Mobile, Vault Fusion Team. Okay, so Fusion Team will be available if you have a subscription for the product design and manufacturing collection. And then we've got the Vault and Autodesk Docs. If you own the AEC collection, um, these two sim similar products, depending on which um, which subscription you have, um, you're given each one. So um, and they're pretty similar in the, in the in their operation. And then finally, Fusion Manage, um, which is linked to your Fusion 360 design software. And as we look at these three user types, we're gonna break it down further into access, both internal and external of your organization. So whether you're an author, participant or reviewer, and whether you're, you need to position your access internally or externally of your vault data. So the first solution we're gonna be shown is shared views. And you can see we have labeled there for the external reviewer. Now, Shared View has been available in Vault for possibly just over three years now. And Shared View allows you to share a light view of your model with external collaborators. It's not only available in Inventor, AutoCAD, 3ds Max, and Revit, but it's also available in Vault, where you can share data without having any CAD applications whatsoever. So let's take a look at Shared Views with inside the Vault. So here we have an assembly. And with a simple right click, we can create a shared view. You can also protect your name and um, any of your identities and any eye properties you wish. Now the process is starting. It's basically the vault is pushing a DWF file and using the forge platform is creating a 3D view of the large model. And once you've got the large model up there, you'll have the possibility now to share that link with an external collaborator. And that link will be available for 30 days. And of course, you can now um, extend that because that was an issue in the early days of it, of, of it uh, expiring after 30 days. And the beauty of this is that the external reviewer can actually um, measure, make comments, and draw as much as they want on, on the model and save that back so that the, um, the reviewer um, can now ping, have this ping pong effect with the engineer inside Vault and this updates instantly. So now there's no need to send any emails uh, with PDFs on or, or Teams now is, a, is, a, is a, a widely used application. So it's all done inside the applications. Now for the internal reviewers, our next user case, um, you may be aware of Autodesk Thin Client. So let's take a look at some of the possibilities with Autodesk Thin Client. One of the things, if you are a user, you'll notice now it adopts the dark theme, which a lot of the Autodesk applications are, are, are doing now. 
And this is available um, if you have one Vault professional license, you get unlimited thin client um, licenses read only. Now, with uh, most of the web um, viewers you use are supported. So um, Internet Explorer, Safari, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Firefox. I said Internet Explorer there, but it, it's it's sort of dying to death now that one. So it's uh, it's 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 more the Edge Edge platform. And with this modern user interface, um, the new features have been implemented on getting al aligned with the Vault client. Um, so it's everything that's sort of been added to the the Vault um, professional. You'll start seeing appearing in that Vault thin client. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So now with the modern day user experience, a the dark theme just looks amazing. Okay, it's giving you that option now to work through your files in pretty much in, in a Windows Explorer type fashion. But not only that, you can get access now to your engineering change orders. You can see where used, um, you can have a look at your items and all of this in, in a browser, like I said earlier. We can utilize the uh, Forge platform again and take a look at the, uh, the 3D model, explore the view, zoom in, and all of this can be possible with either a, a Windows PC or a tablet. We can drill down, search for components, and really bring out all that information we require to focus in on the areas we wish to concern, which, which we are concerned with. Now what, uh, sorry, and now with the capabilities of going to every file and actually being able to download the file and share the links to those files with, with other parties within your team. Now what happens if you go to a product, which has happened so many times to myself, and there's no view created in Vault? It's not a problem anymore because you can now update visualization directly in the thin client. Wow, thank you. Um, so, and that'll go off, go on the job process and process this view. Um, so I hope you agree that for, for, for I don't like to say use the word free, but for a free tool, um, it, it's really powerful and it's great for that internal uh, reviewer option. Now, Vault Mobile app. I'm not sure if everybody's uh, familiar with the Vault Mobile app, but this it's possibly been out just over two and a bit years now in, in the early stages. And um, one of the things was it was only available to um, Apple devices in the App Store. But now, great news is it's also available on Android. Um, it's compatible with any iOS version 12 and above and Android version 8 and later. Okay, the, the Vault Mobile app is compatible with 2020, 2021, and 2022 servers. Remember for this one though, you do need a, a Vault subscription license to be able to use it. And to order, in order to use this app, you need to speak to your license administrator to actually turn on the tick box to give you the entitlement to use this, this amazing app. Now let's have a look straight on an iPad. Um, so one of my colleagues is running through this for me in, in a video. Um, so you can imagine if you're on site and you're the sales engineer and you're sitting with that customer and the customer has um, wants to make a change to this specific design. We can show them the, the actual, what it's looking like. We can do exploded views using the power of Forge. Uh, we can bring up information, properties information, etc. But now the customer wants to start a change order on this particular device. And this is very easy to do. And again, all on a tablet or a mobile device, we can add information in here um, saying what the issues is or what the, what the problems are. Um, we can take photographs. We can browse for files on the device and attach those to this specific um, change order. But don't forget, as we're doing this, it's actually going back to the office, to the engineer, and then notified within the application that a change has been made. So we can respond to this in real time and add comments to this um, as you're asking for more information or just communicating um, back with this engineer who's currently on site. And as you'll see from the examples on screen, uh, it's, it, it's updated just like a messenger would, but it's all integrated into that um, change order with all the attachments and the files associated to that particular uh, model. 
So I hope it gives gives you an idea about the possibilities there with the, the, the Vault Mobile app. Very powerful. Now, we mentioned obviously the internal reviewer for the, the, the web client and the internal participant participant for the Vault Mobile app. Now, if we just take a look at the comparison matrix here, we can see quite easily the differences between the two, because I don't want you to think that there's so many applications, which one do we choose? It, there's really, it's quite easy just to split down as the internal reviewer for the thin client is just read-only access. Um, it's unlimited access, so you have lo you know a multitude of licenses per, per one seat, um, and it supports any browser, whether it'll be on your uh, PC or your uh, tablet. Whereas the Vault Mobile app is for somebody who needs to participate in that workflow. So you can create and add files, create ACOs, which you've seen in the video previously. You can scan QR codes of your product and it'll take you directly to that part with inside your Vault. Wow. But remember, you do need a, um, a Vault description for a uh, subscription for this. Um, and it's supported now on both platforms, iOS and Android. So it's a win-win. Now on to the next topic. So we've got shared data and project sync. So we'll start off with shared data. Now with shared data, um, generally you've, you've possibly, if you're using Venti, you've all done a pack and go. Okay, so um, when you're doing a pack and go with Inside Inventor, it takes a full uh, list of components, folder structure, etc., and it allows you to put it into a, a different location. Now that will all happen inside Vault, uh, which you'll see sec in a second in the video. Um, and it, you can then send this to a folder like Google Drive, OneDrive, etc., um, and even in an email, depending on the size of size of the of the uh, of the model you're working with. This can be a little bit clumsy. Okay, so now obviously with the tools, with this Vault shared data and project sync, it's a little bit more seamless. Now with Vault, Vault project sync, now this is fully automated sync. Okay, so it uses the job processor. And if you haven't heard of this, obviously there's there's more information online or just contact us after this, ask any questions to the end. But the job processor automates any manual tasks once you've made a change within the system of Vault. So if we were to change something from work in progress to released, for example, then um, it would set off a trigger and that trigger will automatically upload that, that particular model to a shared drive or shared one whatever, or create PDFs, or, you know, the, the job process is, uh, is, is vast in its, its capabilities. Uh, it's also CAD aware, um, so I don't know how many times you've tried to send somebody in assembly in OneDrive, and then they open it up and none of the links are there. Uh, well, there's, there's no problem with this project sync because it knows exactly where that link should be, and it keeps those links together. Um, so when you open in the file at the other end, it opens first time. Now what you need for this, okay, so there's a lot of little add-ins. So these are generally all on your desktop, not the server. So with this is called the desktop connector. So with the desktop connector, you get Autodesk Drive um, and Autodesk Drive will handle a bit like um, OneDrive and Dropbox and, and things like that, where it puts this Autodesk Drive application on your, on your system. That will then allow you to link up to your Fusion team if you've got product design manufacturing collection or uh, your EC collection um, for Autodesk Docs, or as it says on there, Autodesk K Docs. I don't know why it does that, but hey ho. Um, and then with the desktop connector actually working in the background, um, that's how you get the sync between the two working. And now, and not just on a cloud platform, but you get that working on your desktop as well, and 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 they'll sync together in real time. And as I mentioned earlier, the job processor just automates, automates these tasks for you. Okay. So it's a very short presentation here, but it's quite a large topic. So we'll just quickly go in and just show you um, the pack and go option. So this is one way you can go to your drive um, or Autodesk Docs. However, sometimes when you go in, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't show up. Um, in the Vault application. So you just need to refresh that in the Vault application and you'll find those folders come directly available to you. So rather than having to save it out to a file and copy it into your OneDrive or whatever, it does this automatically now. So you can just go in and pick your actual cloud drive and it'll automatically, with a with a task 
behind the scenes upload this to the server for you or sorry to your cloud storage for you for other um, contributors to access and once our tasks finished we then can we use an Autodesk Docs in this example we can go to Autodesk Docs and you can see now from from this that all of the files are there it's kept all the links and we can explore this up um, so it went to the next video too quick sorry and then it's got some really useful tools in Autodesk Docs and Fusion Teams where you can compare drones um, if you were a Vault user and you've used the Vault Compare Drones in the past um, it's pretty similar but it's a lot more powerful where you can actually go in all cloud-based no cloud applications are required and view the two versions together simultaneously so you can check the changes and check what has changed between the two drones uh, really powerful and that's just one of the, the, the capabilities of the cloud um, and then obviously the job processor once it's triggered to um, process internally for example in this instance you can click manually upload and it will manually upload these files and sync them backwards and forwards if required and then it will run through the job processor queue now these are just triggers so you can get it to do this automatically so you don't have to click that upload to cloud button um, but it again very powerful um, options vault plm what a topic to uh, to be our penultimate uh, topic anyway um so vault plm um is Obviously, I mentioned earlier is the buzzword currently at Autodesk. So it's Vault Professional um, and uh, Fusion Manage. I will refer to Lifecycle. Forgive me. It's it's just drilled into me what it was called, but it has changed to Fusion Manage. It's not Fusion Lifecycle anymore. Um, now, Vault PLM just covers a wide range of of, um, of applications, which we'll go through in in, in a minute. So let's start on this side, the PDM. So this is where we manage all the engineering data. It handles models, drones, and assemblies, and metadata, and, it's, and, and keeps all that relation between library files, et cetera. And this is generally owned by the engineer, and it has an integration with a CAD application, you know, like your inventor and vault, et cetera. So that's your PDM, okay? But on the other side, you have the PLM, okay? So PLM, as you can see from the screen, um, covers a multitude of topics okay and this will um, manage the entire process from end to end of your product life cycle okay so from early concept right through to engineering production to services and this is what Autodesk and myself are calling Vault PLM it's the full solution to go even deeper than that okay a lot of the customers um, we currently support need additional systems to support their full life cycle you know anything from crm pdm erp and even mes and with autodesk vault plm solution it spans across them all okay so we cover it combat sorry the data and the process kpis and we can even have that capability which we're shown today to extend that out to internal and external collaborators and the life cycle efficiently tends to be solved by one single business system. So let this is this topic for um, fusion managers is is huge. So maybe that's another webinar, another discussion you can have take up with myself or Johnny at a later date. Um, so this is just a very quick uh, video to show you the possibilities. So we're looking now. We're starting in the Vault PDM solution, and we're looking at some items. Um, and we're finding our subassembly, and we want to check the status of that subassembly. Okay, and we can bring up the files exactly as normal. But what we're going to do is we're going to change that state to released. And once we change that released, it now leaves our PDM still staying there to reference, and publishes it automatically to our Fusion Manage system in the cloud. Okay, this then gives anybody who doesn't have access to that, um, to the CAD data or to a CAD application or Vault, access either with a tablet or a web file. It allows them to go through and view the model, um, allows them to see any change order files, any attachments, and also check things like the bill of material and the parts list used. So it's a very, very powerful connection between the two.
So now we'll give an example how this life cycle or Vault PDM, PLM works. So let's say a problem's been uh, accounted on site. Okay, and this is ha and it has to go through a proper change management activity. Okay, the service the service engineers may encounter a problem with the equipment and can capture problem report online. While doing so, they can relate this report to relevant master data, like the item being impacted. And because they have access to the system, they can go and visualize all this and check the three D data and see if they've had any other problems with this particular setup or assembly. The report is then attached to a workflow which immediately notifies the relevant people in the engineering department. Engineers can review all the data provided by the service, including attached images and videos and information that would normally be missing. People can return this process to preceding stakeholders to ask for more details. This will be recorded in the process change log all the way. So after analysis, engineers may decide to raise a change order request and from this report fix a given problem within the design. And based on where they used reports, they can easily reveal all the products being impacted and attach them to the request. The request manages information about cost, effort, schedules, etc. And it's all in the documents and what, what, what the impact is going to be on, on that particular change. The change request will also be reported to relevant stakeholders automatically. In order to request their approval, these people can see the impact items and products. They also have all the information of the catalyst. The problem report to hand, the workflow provides capability to take decisions. They can either request the, it or this will then record the change log and inform the other stakeholders. Oops, sorry. So once all the approvals are done, the system will automatically spawn uh, the related change order processes and can imp impact the product data based on the change request impact analysis. A lot of words there, sorry. Um, what that means is uh, once a task has been created, it will then go back to the engineering department where in Vault, they can actually now change and make changes within their um, engineering uh, software and make all the requested change orders and and then basically produce it back to quality and check-in to proceed for that um, for that design to be finished or problem to be fixed again it all goes back round and around and around until the pro problem is indeed fixed by all parties now where does vault plm sit now vault plm sits right in the middle okay so it connects all your mechanical engineers inventor autocad solidworks design engineers into the vault into plm and it also allows any of the advanced simulation specialists the ecad specialist generative design also to input on those design processes and have access to those files and information and more importantly still everyone who needs access to that data and to those changes and to those product life cycles who don't use cad are given that access to Okay, so that very brief, but next up, we're going to look at Fusion Manage. Okay, so Fusion Manage um, is an extension which sits inside um, Fusion 360. And I don't know if there's any users online with Fusion 360 at the moment, but the designs in Fusion 360 we're seeing are maturing in, in complexity. Um, and it's really difficult to manage the changes. But now with Fusion Manage extension, we can do it. We can um, collaborate automate and formalize a design approval process and that's what we can do with the fusion manage extension Oops, sorry and you probably agree using uh, fusion 360 that um, to implement a piece of software normally takes it's very costly and it can take take weeks to customize whereas fusion 360 you just pop it in and you're up within within minutes um and you know and these are all predefined approval workflows are going to be available to you in this fusion manage extension 
And a benefit of the approval process is allowing the design to have not only versions, but revisions. Okay, yeah. So you, there's always this common confusion between versions and revisions and et cetera. But yeah, now you've got revisions and you can handle your revisions directly in the cloud. And you can collaborate with shop floor managers and other collaborators. And, and the benefit of this is they know that they're working on the uh, released version or the release revision of that component. Because if a customer was to manufacture with the wrong revision, the material scrapped and reworked labor costs could be astronomical. The ROI that users could see with this manage extension will be instant. So I hope you did find that useful. We'll just let this video finish off um, and please do feel free to, to ask any questions. We've got, a, you know, we've got quite a bit of time left, so it'd be great to have a, uh, to answer some of your, your questions. And um, yeah, thank go. you very much. Cheers. Thank, thanks for that, Mark. That was great. Um, so we've had a, had a few questions so come in. To Johnny now. Um, firstly, uh, Christian's asked uh, how much is it, please? Um, so <laughs> when it comes to that kind of thing, I think, um, I'll, I'll get back to you down, Christian, because obviously there's various parameters um, and, and things based on license count. So I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. Um, one thing I would say, though, that, that there are various versions depending on you know what it is that you're um, looking to do. Um, in terms of uh, another question that's come in, we Joe's asking Mark, does it integrate with other CAD packages available? Yeah, uh, which 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 application, Joe, were you were you mostly interested in? Um... Obviously, with the Vault application itself, that will all the Autodesk products are compatible, um, and there are other vendors that do have the add-in available as well. Um, Fusion uh, Manage is um, you do it's not um, application dependable, so you can use any application with 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 the PLM package. Um, and hopefully, that's answered your your question, Joe. Um, if you let me know which uh, package you were interested in, I can, uh, I can answer. Yeah, I mean, I can easily follow up with you as well, Joe, and we can have a, a further conversation based around what specific package you're using and, and whether that's because I'm right in thinking that some, you know, some do and some don't. Is that right, Mark? You know, it's kind of like a, it's it's a it's a variable thing. It's not really a definitive. They do with all, for instance. It's kind of can be with some and, and it doesn't with others. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, so one question that um, that I, I, I've got for you, Mark, is that um, you know when people are, for instance, you, you showed us the mobile um, mobile app. Does that mean that people can literally just use that anywhere, wherever they are in the world, or is that sort of still tethered to the UK, for instance, or, or whichever region you're using from? Yeah. So the 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 Vault mobile app is designed to work um, this side of the firewall, so internal to your business. Um, so, oh, right, okay. yeah, so wherever you are in the world, you would still require a VPN connection. So a connection into your network. Once you have that established, then it is like you're working internally in your office or, or whatever. So for example, we're all working at home right now. Um, and I have a VPN connection directly into work. So it's like I'm working in the office. Um, and that's what you would need to, to enable to connect. The other thing with that is, you know, the, the Cloud technology and virtual servers in the cloud, etc., um, are, are pretty much well they're up and coming on. They're, they're still very expensive, but they're you know they're, a lot of people are moving all the vault data into the cloud. And if that's the case, then you could use it anywhere as well without a VPN. But it's the security is a, is, is another question on that one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, that's a, yeah. when it comes to cloud and security. I think that's something that uh, Autodesk are constantly looking at because it's. Um, it's a, it's off it's a, absolutely it's a real uh, real hornet's nest as it, it is indeed yeah yeah um, absolutely i think that's uh, that's uh, all the questions that we've got from now on so um obviously i'd like to thank you very much for um for your time and and for your presentation thought it was great um obviously i shall follow up uh, with you all that, that have uh, attended and for the people that are watching the recorded version um you know if you if you want to get in touch with myself uh, or anyone at cadac we'll be happy to help you with any any questions you've got going forward. And um, yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much all for your time and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you.